Hey guys, it's Mr. Marek, back with some more circuit information and knowledge. In this video, we're going to approach circuits from a different standpoint. Basically, we're going to break the different kinds of circuits down, give them names, give them rules, so we can classify and analyze circuits in a more broader context. The first kind of circuit is generally referred to as a series circuit. In a series circuit, the resistors are part of the same loop, of the circuit. A simple picture might look like this. We have two light bulbs, one battery, and we connect them so that they're both part of the same loop. A circuit diagram will look something like this. There's one loop or one complete path from one side of the battery to the other that includes both of our light bulbs. When two light bulbs are added in series, they have to have the same current. This is basically a function of Kirchhoff's junction rule. Because the charges that go through the first one don't have any other path to follow, they also have to go through the second one. So when you see resistors in series, remember that they have to have the same current. The equivalent resistance, or REQ, is a fancy term that we give for the sum of the resistors. For series resistors, you simply add them up. So the equivalent resistance would be one R1 plus R2 plus R3, etc., etc., however many resistors you might have. So for example, suppose you had three 3 ohm resistors added in series to each other. Three 3 ohm resistors in series would be equivalent to a single 9 ohm resistor. Now there's a couple different uses for that. The first, we're going to use that to solve problems. Like if I ask you what's the current through all those resistors, you're going to need to figure out the equivalent resistance first. The second, which is more a more practical aspect, suppose you're building a circuit and you need a 9 ohm resistor, but you don't have any. I don't even know if they make 9 ohm resistors. Well, if you have a bunch of 3 ohm resistors, then you can make your own 9 ohm resistor out of 3 3 ohm resistors. And so in practical aspects, people that are building circuits for whatever reason will use equivalent resistance to fill in gaps where they don't necessarily have the correct size resistor. So obviously, when you add resistors in series, you increase the resistance. An analogy is kind of like adding straws together end to end. If you take two straws and you tape them together so that the first one ends where the second one begins, and then try to drink something through it, it's going to be real difficult. And so resistors are the same way. It's difficult to push charges through resistors when you add them end to end in a series circuit. So let's look at a simple example. Suppose we have this circuit where I have a 2 ohm, a 3 ohm, and a 4 ohm resistor all connected in series to an 18 volt battery and our job is to figure out how much current goes through each resistor. So the first thing to realize is that since they're in series they're all going to have the same current. And so you may think we're looking for three answers here, but really we're only looking for one answer. Now I know that I can use Ohm's law to calculate the current. The question is, what do I use for the resistance? If the 2, the 3, and the 4 all have the same current, then they must be affecting each other somehow. And so what we need to do is we need to figure out what the equivalent resistance is. And so if I add up all those resistors, 4 plus 2 plus 3, we would get 9 ohms. And so in Ohm's law, take my 18 volts divided by 9 ohms gives me a current of 2 amperes. And so through each resistor, there is a current of 2 amperes. The next thing we want to do is calculate the voltage drop across each resistor. Now the voltage drop is going to be different. It's easier to push 2 amps of current through a 2 ohm resistor than it is to push the same 2 amps through a 3 ohm resistor. 
So the charges are going to lose different amounts of energy as they go through each resistor. So we're going to use Ohm's law for each resistor individually. For the 2 ohm resistor, the voltage drop will be 4 volts. Remember that the delta V will be negative 4 when we write it like that. For the 3 ohm resistor, the voltage drop will be 6 volts. And for the 4 ohm resistor, the voltage drop would be 8 volts. Now remember, we can check ourselves because we know the Kirchhoff's loop rule. We know that all those voltages have to add up to zero. And so the question is, is 18 minus 4 minus 6 minus 8 equals zero? And you do some difficult arithmetic there and you would get zero for that. And so that tells us that we've probably done things correctly. Kirchhoff's loop rule is satisfied by all the answers we got using equivalent resistance in Ohm's law, so we probably did things right. So that's an easy way to kind of check yourself on something like this. Now the other way to add resistors into a circuit together is to make a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, resistors are parts of different loops of current in the circuit. So if we take our same two light bulbs, but we connect one directly to the battery and the second directly to the battery, then we've made a parallel circuit. Two different ways we might represent that in a circuit diagram look something like that. When you add resistors in parallel, they have to have the same voltage, which again is a consequence of Kirchhoff's loop rule. What that means is that they're probably going to have different currents, except in the specific case when they're the same resistors, they'll always have different currents. When you add resistors in parallel, it decreases the equivalent resistance. An analogy, again using the straws, is like adding straws side by side. If you take two straws and you kind of bunch them together, so that you can drink through both of them at the same time, side by side, you're going to be able to drink things much quicker, much faster. Basically what you've done is you've decreased the resistance to the fluid flow, just like parallel resistors decrease the resistance to current flow. And so the equivalent resistance when resistors are in parallel is not just adding them together, you actually add the reciprocals together. And so our equation looks like 1 over our EQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, etc., 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 however many resistors you might have. So for example, suppose we took three 3-ohm three resistors and we added them together, but this time we did it in parallel. So to find the equivalent resistance, I would simply do 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3, which is 3 over 3. And then when you invert that, it would be 3 over 3 again, which is 1 ohm. So if you take those three resistors, add them in parallel, then you're going to get an equivalent resistance, which is much smaller. Basically, the charges have more paths to follow, and so it's easier for them to move, from one end of the battery to the other. So remember, resistors in parallel will decrease the equivalent resistance. So let's look at another example. Suppose that I had a 9 ohm and an 18 ohm resistor connected in parallel like this to an 18 volt battery, and we want to know a couple different questions about this setup. First of all, what is the equivalent resistance? Well, if I do 1 over 9 plus 1 over 18, and then obviously get a common denominator, then 1 over REQ would be 3 over 18. Invert both sides, REQ would be 18 over 3, which is 6 ohms. So that means that those two combined have a resistance of 6 ohms. Next question is, what is the current? through each of those resistors. 
remember that the resistors in parallel do not affect each other. And so if you take away the 18 ohm resistor, the 9 ohm resistor is going to be not affected, including its current. And so just do Ohm's law for each one separately. Do 18 over 9 and get 2 amperes for the first one. And do 18 over 18 and get 1 ampere for the second one. The next question we might ask is what is the reading on the and meter that we randomly stuck in the circuit right there? Well, both currents are flowing through that ammeter. That's again Kirchhoff's junction rule. All the current that goes between the 9 and the 18 ohm resistors all has to go through that ammeter. And so the ammeter would read 3 amperes. Let's look at another example which is slightly more complicated. Suppose we had this circuit where we have a 30 volt battery connected to a 5 ohm, 2 ohm, 4 ohm, and 12 ohm resistor in this arrangement where the 4 ohm and 12 ohm resistor are in parallel with each other. And so you've got four resistors and you've got both kinds of circuits represented. You've got a parallel branch and that parallel branch is in series with the 2 ohm and the 5 ohm resistor. So the first thing we should do is figure out what is the equivalent resistance for this entire circuit. So in other words, just start simplifying things until you get down to one resistor. So the first thing we'll do is do the parallel part. If I kind of redraw my circuit like this, where I find the equivalent resistance between the 4 ohm and the 12 ohm resistor, which we can do using our reciprocal rule, And so that, those two resistors combined would give you a resistance of 3 ohms. Now my circuit's a little bit simpler. Now it looks like a 30 volt battery connected in series to a 5 ohm, a 3 ohm, and a 2 ohm resistor. Or a 30 volt battery connected to a 10 ohm resistor. And so figuring out the current through the circuit is simple. We just do 30 volts divided by our 10 ohms, which will give us a current of 3 amperes. And so I can draw the current on that diagram. I can draw it on this diagram. Now even though there's no actual 3 ohm resistor, because the equivalent resistance is in series with the other two, combined, the 4 ohm and the 12 ohm resistor must have a current of 3 amperes. I'm going to go ahead and put that current on the top diagram. The 2 ohm and the 5 ohm resistor both have to have a current of 3 amperes. So we got those two answered. The only thing is we need to figure out what's the current through the other two. Let's focus on just that part of the circuit for just a moment. And let's again start with the simplest picture the equivalent resistance between those two is 3 ohms. And so I know that since there's 3 amperes of current flowing through an equivalent resistance of 3 ohms, that the voltage has to be 9 volts. Remember, since they're in parallel, they both have to have the same voltage. No matter which resistor we go through, the potential drop has to be 9 volts. And so I can do Ohm's law separately for the two resistors in parallel to get the current for each of them. And so the 9 volts divided by 4 ohms will give me 2 and a quarter amperes. The 9 volts divided by 12 ohms will give me 3 quarters amperes. And so the current through the 4 ohm resistor is 2.25 amperes. The current through the 12 ohm resistor is 0.75 amperes. So kind of just redrawing our diagram real quick. Those were the answers that we got. We can check ourselves by using Kirchhoff's rules. 
First of all, does the current that we calculated for the 4 ohm and 12 ohm resistor obey the junction rule? In other words, is 2.25 plus 0.75 equal 3 amperes? Do some simple arithmetic. That is true, and so the junction rule is being obeyed. Next thing, let's figure out if the loop rule is obeyed. I can use Ohm's law to figure out the voltage across the other two resistors. That's just simple as multiplying the current we got by the resistance. And so the check is, is 30 volts minus 6 volts minus 9 volts minus 15 volts equals 0. And so you add that up real quick, and yeah, that equals 0. So since both the Kirchhoff's rules are being obeyed, chances are we did it correctly. If we got something different, if we got the delta V for the circuit to equal something other than zero, then we made a mistake somewhere. So the basic steps we need to follow. First of all, make the circuit as simple as possible by redrawing the circuit and use your equivalent resistance rules. And so however many different things, different branches there are in your circuit, just keep simplifying it until you get to something you can deal with using Ohm's law. Second, figure out how much current goes through any resistors that are in series directly to the battery. And then figure out the voltage across any parallel branches that are part of that series. We didn't look at an example like this, but if you needed to repeat that process, you would keep, keep repeating it, working backwards to your original diagram as long as it took. We won't see anything that's much more complicated than the example that we've seen, but the basic process for more complicated circuits is just the same. Keep on using Ohm's law to figure out your current, and then use that to figure out the voltage across any parallel branches. So, see if you can do this one on your own. Got a circuit that looks like this. And the basic job is to figure out the current through each resistor. So, press the pause button, figure out the current through each resistor, and then press play again and see if what you got matches what I've got. The first thing that I would have done is redrawn the circuit looking something like this. The two bottom resistors are in series with each other. So 3 ohms plus 3 ohms would give you 6 ohms. The next thing I would do is figure out the current through the top resistor. 30 volts over 3 ohms will give you a current of 10 amperes. So I know that the top resistor has 10 amps of current going through it. Do the same thing for the bottom resistor, the 6 ohm resistor. 30 volts attached across the 6 ohm resistor will give you a current of 5 amperes. And so putting that back on our original diagram, our currents will look like that. Just like everything we do in physics, practice is going to make perfect. So we'll do lots of practice in class. Make sure that you're understanding what's going on. Don't simply write down answers, but write down good explanations, show all your work, things like that. These are simple rules. It's just we're being asked to apply them to complicated situations. And so we need to do a lot of practice in order to understand. As always, if you have any questions, please be sure to bring them up during class, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.